All right, so let's look at the um, sample exercises. We'll talk about them just a little bit. This is example 7.1. Calculate the wavelength in nanometers of the red light emitted by a barcode scanner as a frequency of 4.62 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Um, second, second, first is hertz. Um, all we have to do here is we need to understand that we know the velocity here. So if we know the velocity, that's the speed of light, we can use this equation, V equals C over lambda. I'm sorry, that's not V, that's frequency. Um, C is the speed of light, that's our constant. And we convert it just by plugging in our numbers, get an answer, nice and simple. Um, here's another practice problem for you to try exactly like that. Example 7.2, energy. A nitrogen gas laser pulse, the wavelength of 337 nanometers, contains 3.83 millijoules of energy. How many photons does it contain? Okay. Um, so if we know the amount of energy per photon at 337 nanometers, so we're going to calculate first. At 337 nanometers, how much energy does a photon have? And then if we know how much energy we have total, we can just divide to figure out how many photons we needed to get that much energy. So we are given the wavelength and total energy. Um, so we're going to calculate the energy of an individual photon. Then we're going to divide the total energy of the pulse by the energy of the photon. Leave the number. All right, so there's our plan. Um, where energy is H, H, which is um, Planck's constant times um, frequency, okay? I say frequency, though it's written C o or speed of light over wavelength because the speed of light divided by the wavelength will give me my frequency for energy equals um, HF. So we need to um, make sure we're always converting back to our base units. We need to go to meters, we need to go to joules. All right, so we calculate out here. We calculate out here um, that my wavelength is 3.37 meters, and then to find the energy of the photon, we plug in there's Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength we just found. So we know it's this amount of joules for each photon. Okay then we know that we have this many joules total. So all we divide is the number of joules that we have total divided by the joules per photon at that wavelength. That tells us the number of photons there are. There's another practice problem. Very similar for you to try. All right, example 7.3, wavelength, energy, and frequency. Arrange the three types of electromagnetic radiation, visible light, x-rays, and microwaves, in order of increasing wavelength and frequency and energy per photon. Um, they only picked out three. Remember, there's, we can label radio, gamma, ultraviolet, infrared. There's all kinds of stuff. Um, we just have to understand, you know, what means what. So, I guess we'll throw it all up all together. Um, wavelength, the frequency and wavelength are inverse proportional. So the longer the wavelength, the shorter the frequency. The ordering of spectral frequency is a reverse the ordering of spectral wavelength. Um, it helps me to tie this back with energy. So, low wavelengths, you know, like jamming it all together is a high energy. So, that means that x-rays, um, let's see, so we're going to order of increasing, all right. So x-rays have the, um, the lowest wavelength because they have the highest energy, followed by visible, and then microwaves have the lowest energy because they have a higher wavelength. So we can see that their wavelength is longer which gives them a lower energy because it's all stretched out. And it's an analogy when I say stretched out. 
um, it's easier to think about in terms of frequency, I think, for me. Um, because maybe it's just easier to understand direct relationships, I guess. Um, so frequency and energy are directly proportional. Um, high frequency, high energy. So if you have a high number of hertz, means you have a high number of joules per photon. So microwaves are the most, I'm sorry, microwaves are the least energetic, up to x-rays the most energetic, which all relates back to this last idea, energy per photon. All right, so think about that in terms of the three colors of visible light. Try this practice problem. Remember um, Roy G. Biv. And if you have trouble remembering whether the R side is low or the V side is low, um, think of what border is visible light. There's infrared and ultraviolet. Infrared, infra means below, so red's at the bottom end, and ultra means above, so violet's at the top end. All right, so before the de Broglie wavelengths, calculate the wavelength of electron traveling at the speed of 2.65 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So we know the speed of electron, finding wavelength. Well, the wavelength is um, inversely proportional to momentum. I say momentum, which is mass and velocity. So we're using the de Broglie relation. We're going to follow this plan. Um, one thing that's important to realize is this mass of an electron, that's a constant. Okay, you have to look that up. Quantum numbers. What are the quantum numbers and names of the orbitals in the n equals 4 principal level? How many n equals 4 will exist? So this is testing your understanding of the relation between n, l, and ml. So the possible values of l, so it's always n minus 1. So if we had n equals, if n equals 4, then l could be 0, 1, 2, or 3. So we start at 0, and we count up until we get to 4 minus 1, because n is 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we have to determine the values of ml for each value of l. So for a given value of l, the possible values of ml are the energy values, including 0, ranging from negative l to positive l. So for the l equals 0, well, from positive 0 to negative 0 is so 0. For L equals 1, from negative L to positive L, that's negative 1, 0, positive 1. For L equals 2, we go from negative L to positive L, negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2. And so that, that there, each one of those is a different orbital. So 1 orbital, 3 orbitals, 5 orbitals, 7 orbitals. And uh, each orbital can hold 2 electrons. So two electrons go there, six there, ten there, fourteen there. And um, then we'll name them. Whenever we name an orbital, we give it, it we use its um, principal quantum number, the n, followed by the letter that corresponds with L. So L equals zero is S. So this is 4S, because this is N4 L0, that's 4S. For N4 L1, that's 4P. For N4, L2, that's 4D, N4, L3, 4F. SPDF is the order. So try that with uh, 5. Okay, example 7.6, quantum numbers 2. These sets of quantum numbers are you supposed to specify an orbital. One set, however, is erroneous. Which one and why? All right, so we're looking at them. We know a couple things. Um, we know that n can be any integer greater than or equal to 1. So if we look at these, all the n's, 3, 1, 2, 4, they're all integers. That means they're whole numbers. And they're all greater than or equal to 1. So the n's all look good. Let's look at the l's. So the l's start at 0 and count up to n minus 1. So that means for n equals 3, we could have 0, 1, or 2. Okay, that's fine. For n equals 2, we could have 0 or 1. 
that's fine. For n equals 1, we could have just 0, which we do. That's good. For 4, we could have 0, 1, 2, or 3. Okay, so the L's are good. So we're expecting a problem with one of these ML's. So ML can be from the negative to the positive of L. So from negative L to positive L, that's 0 to 0. That's what we got, 0. For here, for L equals 1, that goes from negative L to positive L, negative 1, 0, or 1. That's what we got. For here, same thing. For here, L equals 1, we can have negative 1, 0, or positive 1. We have negative 2. That's no good. Okay? Here is a number practice problem for you to try. Hopefully you're pausing these and actually trying these. All right, wavelength of light for a transition in the hydrogen atom. Determine the wavelength of light emitted when an electron in the hydrogen atom makes a transition from an orbital in n equals 6 to an orbital in n equals 5. You are given the energy levels of an atomic transition and asked to find the wavelength of emitted light. So we're going from 6 to 5 in this case. Um, what we need to do is find the difference in energy between the two. When we say difference, that means subtraction. So we're going to find the energy... Or um, the energy in 5 and subtract the energy in 6. Um, so after that, then the change in energy of the atom is the negative energy of the photon. The difference in sign between E photon and change E atom applies only to emission. Um, if we were talking about absorption, it would be the opposite because we're giving off energy. Um, so, we have, we have that. Um, so, okay. So we calculate the change in energy of the atom. So we do here for 5 and there for 6. Which really the easiest way to do that would be just to factor it out. And there's our answer. Okay. If I go back, we can see it's really um, it's a problem that seems like it's a little highly conceptual, but it's actually pretty easy. And then um, once we find the energy here. We have to go and find the wavelength, given this formula. So we rearrange this formula for the wavelength, plug in our numbers, and we're good. Um, keep note that there are a couple constants in there. So if you see a number that you didn't know where it came from, wasn't the problem, constant. Practice problems. All right, here's some extra practice for you. Um, these, I want you to pause it and work it out. Then um, these will be your homework questions. Okay, I have the answer provided. Um, these are just participation based. Um, I want you to show your work and bring it in, but they're all right here. So I'll give you about five seconds to pause it and um, make sure you actually work the question and have an answer and have it written down on paper and then unpause it and go to the next one. Um, I'm going to upload a copy of this PowerPoint too, that way you can print it if you would like, if that helps you. And I'll post that link. Um, but be careful that you don't gl glance at the answer before you get a chance to answer the question. All right, let's go ahead and pause and work. Remember to use that speed of light constant there. All right, pause and think about this.
Remember which ones are directly proportional and which ones are inversely proportional. Okay, remember the law of conservation of energy. And also remember um, what Einstein said about the photoelectric effect. Remember, you're going to have to use um, Planck's constant here and make sure you're checking your units. Again, make sure you're checking your units. That energy there is the total amount of energy. So find out how much energy one photon at that wavelength has, and then you can figure out how many total photons that is. I find the Broly wavelengths both amazingly confusing, but also very intriguing. The problem with de Broglie wavelengths is that the um, analogy to water waves starts to break down. But remember Bohr said that at the macroscopic level, the classical predictions and the quantum mechanical predictions are the same. It's only at the microscopic level that the classical predictions break down. Whenever you think about these n l's and n sub l's and orbital Remember, tie it back to the orbitals. They actually have a meaning. Um, they seem a little bit arbitrary. But remember, that's only because the solutions to the Schrodinger equation uses very high-level mathematics. But um, they mean things, so make sure you tie it back to what they're meaning. Change in energy. We have some subtract there. Remember, each progressive change in N is a smaller change in energy than the change in N before it. The difference in 1 and 2 is greater than the difference in 2 and 3, so on and so forth, ad infinitum. All right, hope that gives you some extra practice there. There's another one like the one before it. Remember all the rules for N, M, 